Hi, welcome to this video where we'll walk you through a demo of the Jesus Chat UI client. Jesus Client has been built for the Jesus platform, which is an enterprise grade full stack SaaS platform for Gentic applications. But we have decided to make the chat client available for everybody. So if you're building an AI agent with many with any of the open source frameworks out there, you can use the Jesus Chat client, which is an enterprise grade, really uh, sleek and production ready interface that you can just drop into place and plug into your existing stack of the agent framework that you're using. And I'm going to walk you through the uh, a sample example via th going through the GitHub repo and a hands-on um, setup on how you're gonna use it. So let's get started. So this is the GitHub repo where you get access to the chat client. You can go through this repo. It, we have support for various frameworks out there. And the way we have built this is you get examples of how to use it. So if you go here and this is work in progress, so you will have much more, many more examples coming up in future. Right now we have only Python SDK examples, but we'll also add TypeScript examples coming up. So uh, you have frameworks like Agno, AWS Trans, Google ADK, Langchain, Microsoft Agent Framework, and Microsoft Autogen. So for every framework, we have examples on how to use it. So for example, in the Google ADK, uh, set up, you will have two examples, uh, one which uses the bi-directional streaming, which is for real-time using the live APIs, and the one is this standard socket, socket server-side streaming uh, for the other models that you have. So every, every repo is structured, every folder example is structured like that, where you have an example which talks about how do you set up this and how do you go about it. So I have just uh, configured the repo in my VS Code, and when you when you clone the repo, you would see an example, the example folders. So let's let's take the Google SDK example. So for example, if I go to the, uh, so in the bi-directional streaming example, you will have the main.py file. This is the file, which is an example implementation using WebSocket, Fast API WebSockets, where we have some uh, opinionated way of doing authentication. There is a utils file. You should go through this on how the JWT authentication is set up. Basically, what we have done is in the WebSocket that you have to connect to, you need to pass a token, and that token needs to be validated. So if you are if you configure your agents to work in the public mode, then the agent will generate its own token and return back to you. But if you want to have a more private setup, you have to change this part of the code where you want to define how do you want to do the token part, right? So that's the, the, those are the sections where you have to move, you have to edit in the util spy. There are some helper functions and placeholder functions which you need to work upon. But this is a, a structure of implementation that you can use. And then you have the socket. Inside the socket, what happens is the code written for the implementation is built. So for example, this is the bi-directional example. So this code is for the bi-directional streaming. Similarly, if I go into the normal standard streaming uh, and open the application file, the first API app has the implementation for the normal streaming. And this goes and applies for every other framework. So let's say if I look at Agno and if I go at my main.py, the same setup is done there. The implementation has been done based on how Agno works and how do you stream and get response from Agno. So one layer of abstraction that we have in the platform is our interface has a way of reading, receiving and sending data. That translation is done and demonstrated in these examples. So let's take the Google SDK and let's take the bi-directional streaming. So if you go to the repo, uh, you would see the first thing is you need to set up a virtual environment and copy the sample env file that you have so you would have a sample env file for example this is a sample env file this is available in every folder so you can see that as an example we have some environment variables here like because it's the google models you'll need the google api key you can give a name to your agent or to your application this is the secret key for your jw authentication you can change as desired and then this is the config key and i'll, I'll talk about the config key shortly 
And uh, the other thing is uh, the agent setup. The agent setup is all configured under the my agent folder in agent.py. Every example is structured like that. So when you go into the my agent folder, if you go to agent.py, this is the place where your existing agent that you have built is placed. So this is a place where you modify your, your multi-agent system depending on the target platform. So for example, this is Agno, this is sorry, this is Google ADK. So this is how you would define. If I go to let's say let's say Microsoft Agent Framework and look into the agent pie, so this is how you would probably set up an example reference of uh, Microsoft Agent Framework. So we have examples of uh, many frameworks here, and you can use them. You can also modify them, but the structure is inside the My Agent. Your entire agent setup is configured, so you you can change this as desired. So right now, this is just an LLM agent, which is which has uh, no tools attached, just a description and instruction. But you get the drill in terms of what has to be done in this page uh, for your agent to be working, right? And and then uh, when you run the application. Uh, it will run it on port 8000. So when you run the application, you will get something like this. So I have configured the environment file. I have configured the, you know, I have everything. I have, okay, one more thing. You have the requirement.txt file. This will have all the dependencies for this application. So you will do a pip install on this requirement file and, and then that should get you up and running. Okay, so let's let's let me run. So let me go through what is what we have here. We have bidirectional streaming, we are using we are using an audio model from this live API audio model from Google, and and we have everything ready. So let's let's run that. Great. So when you have your application up and running, it will run at port eight thousand uh, on a local host. So if you go to localhost port eight thousand, you probably will see a page like this. This page is running your agent. It's basically now deploying. Uh, it is now initialized your chat agent, the Jesus chat agent, which is talking to your agent that you have built. So for example, because this is a voice uh, model, and if I enable speaker and try this, hi. Hey there, how can I help you? What can you do? I can help with a bunch of things, like answering questions, brainstorming, writing, and even coding. What can I do for you today? So the client understands bidirectional streaming. It it understands interrupt and um, voice modulation, all of that. Um, the backend is doing the uh, the translation and transcription, and that's what it's also sending, and you can see that. But the stream responses are all rendered by the interface and uh, you're able to see that. Now, if you see this agent, this this agent right now, this interface is running straight off your environment, which is using your agent, and we can see that. To embed this agent on your web application, all you need to do is copy paste a bunch of code, and you would be done. Right now, coming to the config. Now, in the if you look at the environment sample, we have a config which is given. Now, the config is basically a set of parameters that can that that control the behavior of the agent that you have built in terms of um, in terms of what it can do and how it should how the look and feel should do right so we have uh, and that's that is what is mentioned there in the in the github repo is once you are able to interact now it's time to make changes to the way the interface looks like right so you have the chat ui interface so when you go to the chat ui interface it will show you a page like this and what you can do here is this is showing you this is rendering you how your your agent will look like so you can change all so for example uh, this is by default connected to our agent but let's change this to the local host agent so when you do this now you're talking to the local host agent the one that we, we are running right now here and you can change the chat icon so the icon that you see the image that you see here or the one that loads here you can just set a public URL of that image, and then that image will come up. You can position the the the, the bubble in terms of where you want by using uh, these options. Everything that you see around the text, for example, let's say my my company AI is what you uh, know it is what we are. So all of that uh, customization happens straight away live in this widget. As you make, uh, you, you can you can change things that you want, and those changes are will be appearing here. Slot messages are basically quick replies that come on the agents. For example, if I say if I say hi, 
hello what it basically means is i'm adding those buttons here so if i click on those buttons basically it goes straight away to the agent and as a response um uh, and the and the chat conversation these are basically uh, you know conversation starter points so you can add many agents we also have multi-language support so those options are not here right now but that option will also come here where you can configure multiple languages and uh, the accordingly you can change the introduction uh, options and then you have other options around uh, how the header should look like in terms of the you can customize it in terms of the brand color and you know the schematic themes that you want you, you can basically choose uh, the, the colors theme that matches your brand and your web applications uh, style you have the avatar icon, so you, you can control the size of the icon that comes up there. Um, the border that comes, for example, if you see there's a, there's a border that is coming up, uh, you, you know you can change the size of the border depending on how you want, right? You can allow full screen, which which up appears like this, so it allows your agent to be. So when you're chatting with your interface, you can go straight from here into full screen mode and come and back. So you can enable or disable full screen if you want to, right? Speaker mode is more for uh, when you are using a voice model which can emit audio responses. In that case, you will use speaker mode. For example, in the case of GPT, in the case of GPT real time models or the Gemini Live API, you can use this. Where, for example, in the demo I was showing. I was using the speech model, so there you could use this as the option. And there, these are subtle options by which you will customize the look and feel of every element that comes in the interface. You can enable attachment upload. So if you if you are if you want the agent to be able to support attachment processing and all of that, you can enable that. You can enable, you know, you can disable. So mic is mic is the standard mic option that comes from your browser, and voice input is for speech models. So if you're using speech models, you will probably use uh, only the speech uh, input if you're using if you don't have a speech model but still want a mic input you can use the mic input which will be a standard browser capability right this is in text in terms of what you want and uh, you know these are what is getting displayed here and the last is you need to have a privacy policy page so uh, the link that comes up here this is linked to your privacy policy so you should change this to to your domain and uh, and, and you should kind of I know link it that that way uh, users can click on that link and go back straight into your applications right so you can customize whatever you want and um, for, you should be mindful of your production what's web socket so when you're running your agent in production on cloud or on your servers you will have your own web socket endpoint and you should put that here right now because I'm talking to the local agent I'm doing that but uh, in production, I will change that to production URL. I'll change the right uh, image. And then once I'm done with everything, all you need to do is uh, click on Get Embed Code. This gives you a single line JavaScript embedding code, which runs off the CDN hosted on the GitHub's uh, uh, JavaScript file. And you can literally copy paste this and have this agent that we were having here straight away, the one that you have customized. Just with just one line of code, you will have your agent up and running live in your application, which will talk directly to your socket and you will be able to have that experience. In future, if you want to make changes to your widget, you can also import your widget. So the, the config that you uh, pasted from the previous step, if you paste it back here, it will uh, set up everything with that config. So the idea is, let's say you've spent a lot of time in making changes to this and, and you're live and then you want to make some more changes. You don't have to start over again. You can just import your config and then make the changes and then get the config. The idea is you get a single line of code and that piece of code goes straight away in your application's uh, environment variable, uh, which is the Jesus config environment variable. And this variable controls how your UI you look like. However, this is only used for our application that we are using and the standard file that you saw, this, this HTML that comes up is using that config. But in your application, when you are embedding this in your application, all you need to do is be able to just take this application, once it is properly configured, take this, copy paste this, put it in your web application, and boom, when you load your application, you will have your application up and running with everything. And now you can straight away focus on the various examples that we have, the various models that we have. You can just play with any of them. Try try that option. Obviously, you'll have to work on your my agent file because this is where your agent resides. So you have to define what is your agent, what your capabilities are. But the example that we have given in main file, this is the first API implementation with WebSocket, which handles all the interaction between your chat client 
and your backend. Obviously, you will have to work a little bit on what kind of authentication your application needs. If your application needs a different kind of authentication, you, you would use the token uh, parameter to be able to authenticate that. The token comes to the agent through a request parameter. So when you are talking to the, when you click on this agent, it uses, uh, it has a token. It needs to pass a token request parameter to the WebSocket. So let's say you're building an application where you have your own token that you have generated. When you are making uh, that um, that information, you can pass that token directly to the socket, or we also have what is called custom data. Custom data is, is something that will come directly to your socket. So if you don't want to use this token, you want to set your own custom data, you can pass a custom data keyword as part of the request parameter when you're making the call. So this can be made your part, as part of your request param inputs. And then uh, when you're sending this to the, to the socket, you can use that in your in your in your applications. So if you face any issues in in, in setting this up for your application, just create an uh, create an issue request and the GitHub repo, and somebody from the team will try to address that. We we believe this will help you in speeding up your prototyping around various genetic solutions that you're currently building, and 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 we are constantly working on making the interface that you're looking at extremely good. In terms of if you if this interface has the ability to render markdowns, tables, images, audio, all of that is already built into it, and we're also working on other real time streaming uh, kind of scenarios. So by using an interface like this, you won't have to reinvent all of that up from yourself. And I think this will really help you in your journey of building agents and having an enterprise grade UI that really looks good. Okay, so. Oh, nice day.